Are you struggling with the CPA exam because your course failed to fit your learning style? I'm Darius Clark of I-75 CPA Review, where the right teacher makes all the difference. All right, let's go over the basics about trusts. A trust is a separate legal entity, separate tax paying entity. The creator of a trust must donate assets to the trust. These assets are known as corpus. And trust corpus could typically include cash, real estate, stocks, bonds, or any other types of assets that the donor, the creator, decides to contribute to the trust. Besides the creator donating assets to the trust, the creator will also name a trustee to manage the trust corpus. Why does the creator have to name a trustee to manage the trust assets? because the creator can no longer manage these assets since they will no longer belong to the creator. Trust earnings and trust corpus will be paid over time to the beneficiaries of the trust. Could be one beneficiary, could be multiple beneficiaries. Now the creator, or sometimes known as the grantor, will name the beneficiaries when the trust is created. Three parties are required to create a trust. You need the creator, sometimes known as the grantor or donor. That's the person who sets up the trust by contributing assets. The trustee is the one who's gonna manage the trust. You could have more than one trustee managing the trust. A bank could be named as trustee. And you need a beneficiary, the party to whom the trust is created to benefit and you could have more than one beneficiary. So you could have more than one trustee managing the trust, and you could have more than one beneficiary to whom the trust is created to benefit. And this provides a system of checks and balances. The fact that the trustee manages the trust for the benefit of someone else, the beneficiary. But that trustee was not named by the beneficiary. That trustee was granted power by the creator or grantor of the trust. If the sole trustee became the sole beneficiary, then the trust would terminate because there'd be no checks and balances. But if you have several trustees and one of those trustees was a beneficiary, that would be okay. But you can't have a situation where you have one trustee and one beneficiary and they're the same person. That would terminate the trust because there'd be no more checks and balances. All right, the party who creates the trust and funds the trust with assets is known as the what? Is that A, the trustee? No. Is it B, the beneficiary? No. C, grantor? Yes. D, co-trustee? No. C is correct. A trust begins when a grantor conveys assets to a trustee to manage for the benefit of a third party known as a beneficiary. Another term for grantor is creator or donor. In a trust, which of the following correctly describes the corpus? Is it A, the beneficiary of the trust? No. B, the creator of the trust? No. C, the assets held in trust? Yes. D, the trustee who manages the trust? No. Letter C, in a trust, the term corpus refers to the assets or property held in the trust. This could include things like money, real estate, stocks, bonds, any type of asset can be held in trust. The corpus of the trust is managed by the trustee on behalf of the beneficiary or beneficiaries. So know the term corpus to mean the assets held in trust. All right, what are the reasons to create a trust? A trust can be created for any legal purpose. It can be created to protect assets for future generations. You can give away assets to reduce the estate tax that kicks in when the assets owned at death are going to exceed approximately $14 million. So you can see who gets involved with trusts, very wealthy people often, which makes this a very lucrative area to practice in because your clients will have big money and they'll want to protect that money. So another reason to create a trust besides to avoid the estate tax is to reduce personal income tax. If the wealthy client gives away the asset while still alive, no more tax on the income from that asset because they don't own it anymore. Maybe they gave it to a family member who's in a lower income bracket and they can still protect the asset. Why? 
because it's managed by a trustee if you put it in a trust. Another very important reason to create a trust is to provide for a special needs child. A special needs trust can protect the resources for people with special needs while still allowing them to qualify for public benefits. Also, to limit a beneficiary's direct control over an inheritance. That would be an excellent reason to create a trust, such as stipulating in the trust that the beneficiary has to reach a certain age or achieve a certain milestone in their life in order to receive that inheritance. So limiting a beneficiary's direct control over an inheritance, another good reason to create a trust, along with all of these, and there's plenty more because you can create a trust for any valid legal purpose. So look at wealthy grandpa, deciding that he's paying too much income tax on his fortune. He's worried about the death tax too, because he might have about $14 million. And at the same time, he's worried that when he dies, his children and grandchildren, they might fight over his assets. So his CPA tells him about setting up a trust. This way he can give the assets away while still alive. He can eliminate the death tax and he can reduce his taxable income all at the same time, and any of these assets that he places into the trust, the family can't fight over those assets when he dies. But to accomplish all of this, he's going to have to give up control. So the CPA says, Grandpa, here's what you do. Create the trust, transfer assets, whatever assets you want, transfer them to the trust. Choose a trustee to manage the trust. That trustee will get legal title to those assets while they're in the trust. His CPA could be the trustee or grandpa can name someone else and just name some beneficiaries. Who do you want to benefit from this trust? Now the beneficiaries will not have legal title to the trust assets because that's gonna to belong to the trustee. But these assets and the income from these assets will eventually go to the beneficiary. They will no longer go to grandpa. So the CPA says, what do you think, Grandpa? And what do you think Grandpa's going to say? Uh, let me think about it for a while because most people don't, they're not in such a big rush to give away control over their assets. So they got to hear about this more than once, usually in order to do it. All right, which of the following is not a common reason for creating a trust? And if you think you know, leave me the answer in the comments section. And remember to like and subscribe because it really helps the channel out a lot. And if you need more help with trusts, or any part of the CPA TCP exam, go to i75cpareview.com and get yourself on the right road. Click on CPA Review and then TCP. The complete I-75 TCP course can be used as a standalone, no other materials needed. And that's $129 a month for a subscription, which you can cancel anytime or reach out to me and I'll cancel for you personally. Or if your exam's coming up within a week or two, then choose the TCP CRAM, which is a one-time payment for 15 days. I will leave links in the description. So get on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference.